Becky, successive governments have tried and failed to solve this, and yet here we are. Tonight, we can reveal the true scale of the care home funding crisis. Now, here's what's been happening. The government requires local councils to calculate a fair cost for elderly care. That's what councils pay care homes for, the care they provide in their area. But in an exclusive analysis for Channel 4 News, Care England, which represents care homes, tell us the difference between what councils pay the homes and what it actually costs to provide and deliver that care is £1.5 billion. That's a pretty huge funding gap. Now, this figure is for England only. So what does this mean for bills? Well, 63% of those in care get their bills paid by their council at a rate that the sector claims doesn't cover the true cost of the care that they receive. And so that shortfall is added onto the bills of the 37%, many of them, uh, of elderly people in care who have to pay for their own care. They end up paying significantly higher fees for exactly the same service as these people. Now, Care England says this is self-funders being hit with additional costs, cross-subsidising, basically, those who are publicly funded by local authorities because councils aren't paying enough. Now, the government says it wants this cross-subsidy to stop and it's putting in more money. So, what's really going on in elderly care? In the first in a series of reports, Channel 4 News has had rare access to a group of care homes in Bristol as they grapple daily with the true cost of care. Good morning, Jackie. Yeah, I'm happy. I'm Are you that. happy? Yeah, I like it up here. Do you? Mm. It's quite a nice room, isn't it? Mm. The number of people entering residential care homes is rising. Oh, look what we found. More of us will see out our final days in a privately run home like Hengrove. Oh, you look beautiful. Able Care Homes is a group of six care homes across Bristol, owned and operated by family. You know what? We're right like that. Be good. So Hengrove Lodge is a small home. We've only got 15 beds. Um, we've got people living with us that mainly have dementia. 370,000 people are living in places like this. Right now, just over a third of them have to pay for their own care. Can you manage to cut it? Yeah, yeah. yeah. The other night, dear, as I lay sleeping, I dreamed that you were by my side. With disillusion, as I awoke, dear, you were gone and then. I, <laughs> I would like you to get washed and dressed and then I'll come back in and help you with a shave if you like. I only shave like once a once a week because I'm not I'm not You're not array. I'm not manly enough. <laughs> Boris Johnson's government promised that nobody would need to sell their home to fund care. But that's what some families are having to do. Hello. How lovely to see you. Lovely to see you too. Can you put your hands on the frame? My mum has dementia. OK, you got it. In addition to the residential care costs that we have to pay, we also have to pay the expense of one-to-one -one supervision to reduce her risk of falls. So that's over £9,000 a month that we're having to find, and we had to sell her house to be able to cover those costs. This October, a new cap was due to come into effect, meaning no one would pay more than £86,000 towards their care. But this has been pushed back two years beyond the next election. So, right now, if you have more than £23,250 in assets, you have to foot the whole bill, the entire thing, until your pot is nearly empty. I think it's horrible that they have to sell things that they've worked their entire lives to pay for to then have to spend it all on paying for their care. It's kind of like, that's, that's not fair to me. Can you hold on to this one, Betty? This one here? There could be a lot more funding put into social care. It's something that absolutely everybody's going to need at one point in their life and there's just, there's so much funding that goes to other things that you don't necessarily need. And then you have care workers that don't really get that much pay. You're okay. You're all right. Cup of coffee? If families don't have the funds, local authorities have to pick up the bill. But they are also stretched. 
Morning. Hi. Hiya. Hi, How are you? Josh, I'm Come fine, on. Thank yeah. you. How are you? Good, thank you. Come Approximately, you know, 48% of the council's budget is adult social care now. Sure. They talk about the need across the country being multi billion pounds in, in that social care gap. And the demand's only growing, isn't it? The demand is growing. And the more that we have to find the resources from other parts of the council, that means there's less support out there in communities, the things that yeah. keep people well and living in their own neighbourhood. Try a little bit more. Try a little bit more. Well done. And then this is the first room that I want to show you. So this is the Engrove Lodge has two vacant bedrooms they're looking to fill. A few weeks ago, Dad had a fall at home and he was admitted into hospital. At that point, it was decided that Dad would need to go into a care home. <sighs> so, so we're at the point now where he's ready for an immediate absolutely. discharge. He just needs to find. Yes. He just needs to find somewhere. Yes. Perfect. Absolutely. Okay. It's estimated that as many as one in seven hospital beds in England are taken up by someone who is fit to be discharged, but is waiting for suitable care to be put in place. He's got cancer, so that worries me as to how how that will yeah. develop. Yeah, of course. Um, and, um, you know, he's not obviously having any treatment for it, so it okay. is just very oh, much palliative care. Don't go away to take you to the day. My heart is aching. Hi, Dad. Julia's dad is finally out of hospital. Because he needs ongoing medical care, he's moving into a nursing home and the NHS will cover the bill. This looks like a lovely place to be in. Yes. It's been a very emotional time the last few months. So I'm pleased that we're here. Um, and yes, can hopefully relax a bit now knowing that he is cared for and he's in a much more comfortable place. I had me food, I got, I got me bedroom, everything's nice. I was sinner beyond. My wife brings me chocolate cakes, chocolate, custard creams. She's a good, my wife. Been married 55 years. It's tough. Don't want you to take you down to bed. The cost of care is a major strain for families. Government after government has promised to fix the system. And yet, who pays for social care in future remains one of the big issues of our time. No, 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 darling. How do we solve it? Well, a few days after we filmed with Able Care, Julia's dad, Des, passed away at the age of 97. And the problems he faced aren't new. For decades, social care has been seen as a defining failure that incoming prime ministers promised to fix. Tony Blair, David Cameron, Theresa May and Boris Johnson, all of them pledged to solve social care as part of their legacy. Now, what's the current government saying? Well, in response to tonight's story, the Department of Health say that councils can use a £2 billion boost to adult social care budgets to pay providers more. But Care England argue that current funding in the sector is unsustainable. Uh, and Jackie, they say they've got a whole bunch of other things they need to spend that money on as well. Kieran, thanks very much. Well, earlier I spoke to Damien Green, who was first Secretary of State under Theresa May. He has spent years campaigning for a solution to the social care crisis. And I started by asking him if, five years since he effectively served as Deputy Prime Minister, are we any closer to a solution? Sadly not, no. And, and, and I think that showing that local authorities are apparently not paying uh, enough is, is a symptom. It's not, I don't blame local authorities. Part of the problem, there are many problems with social care, part of the problem is that we try and fund too much of it, too much of it out of local taxation. And 
doing that is, is driving local authorities into bankruptcy. More and more of their money is going on adult social care, so they won't have enough money left to do all the other things we want local government to do. I mean, isn't the biggest part of the problem as regards social care is politicians reneging on promises? Tony Blair, 1997, I don't want a country where pensioners have to sell their home. David Cameron, 2012, promises to end the heartbreak of elderly people forced to sell their homes. Boris Johnson, no one will have to sell their house to pay for social care under the Tories. It's all been nonsense, hasn't it? Well, it's all been driven by that, that one point you've just drawn out, successive prime ministers saying you shouldn't have to sell your home. But, but in the end, so what we've been driven back to is funding social care out of taxation in a way that never keeps up. You'll remember bitterly, I would imagine, Theresa May's plan was to tackle that challenge head on, but it was quickly dubbed the dementia tax, that people were going to have to take too much responsibility. And the Conservatives ran for the hills. So what needs to change? Do, do politicians need to be braver or do we, the public, need to accept we are going to have to pay for this somehow? It's, it's a bit of both. I mean, polit politicians, I think one of the lessons I draw from 2017 is, is don't introduce a radical new policy uh, in a manifesto two weeks before a general election. Actually, have a discussion about it first. Um, and, and the public will have to recognise that, that all of this has to be paid for. And in, in the end, all money comes from the public. If we look at the government at the moment, they've given an extra £2.8 billion worth of funding for social care. Our figures show that the gap between what councils pay care providers and how much it actually costs care providers is already £1.5 billion. Care providers say they're already paying out £2 billion to cover the costs of the minimum wage going up. In the short term, this is not sustainable. No, no, and indeed, uh, perhaps ironically, Jeremy Hunt, now the Chancellor of the Exchequer, when he was chair of the Health Select Committee uh, estimated that you need about seven billion extra a year. I think you know, we are clearly running into a, a year before a general election, so we're not going to get any radical changes uh, or radical suggestions from any of the major parties now. But I think uh, as, as soon as we get the general election out of the way, then is the time to start an honest public debate and say to people, we've got to pay for this somehow here are a range of options of, of, of we want to pay for it and, and the parties will come up uh, with their own proposals. Do you regard that uh, as a sort of political cowardice because you know the government had promised again reforms to social care cap and means testing that has now been postponed until after the next election one assumes that is only because of political expediency I mean is it an act of political cowardice? No this government has done some uh, good and sensible reforms uh, to social care, but but in the end, I think you obviously you have to partly look at it through the lens of what happens to people's property. But that's not the only issue. And, and the problem for 20 years has been that's been seen as the big issue in social care. There are, there are other issues than that, and there are ways of doing it that would mean you don't need to sell your house if you, if you need to fund expensive social care. But we do need to do something radically different and confront people with the, with the thought that this has to be paid for somehow. And there is no point thinking that somebody else is going to pay for it. We are all going to have to pay for it one way or another. Damien Green, thank you very much for talking to us.